Welcome back to my channel, Storytime Tuber. Today, I will be reading Spork, written by Kyle McClear, illustrated by Isabel Arsenault. Let's begin. Spork was neither spoon nor fork, but a bit of both. He had a mom and a dad who both thought he was perfect just the way he was. But Spork stuck out. In his kitchen, forks were forks and spoons were spoons. Cutlery customs were followed closely. Mixing was uncommon. Naturally, there were rules breakers. Knives who loved chopsticks, tongues who married forks. But such families were unusual. One day, after the billionth time, he was asked, What are you, anyway? And the zillionth time, he was passed over when the table was being set. Spork sighed and thought, it must be easier to be a single thing. And he decided he'd try to pick just one thing to be. He thought he should start by fixing his head. He put on a bowler hat to look more spoonish. But the forks thought he was too round. Then, he made a paper crown to look more forkish, but the spoons thought he was too pointy. Spork wondered if there were other lonely creatures out there with no matching kind, who never got chosen to be at the table. At dinner time, he washed from the drawer while the spoons played pea hockey and skillfully balanced boiled eggs. He sat off to the side while the forks raked fancy patterns in the mashed potatoes and twirl noodles around in complicated circles like rhythmic gymnasts. And at the end of this, and every other meal, Spork looked on while the others enjoyed a super bubbly bath in the sink. Until one morning, a messy thing arrived. This messy thing had obviously never heard of cutlery customs or table manners. No, this messy thing smeared and spelled and flung and clumped and dripped without a care. Wait, said the forks, but the messy thing did not wait. Careful, said the spoons, but the messy thing was not careful. Help, said the forks, while the messy thing continued to slop and splatter. Quick, said the spoons. Now a fork may be good for poking and picking, and a spoon may be fine for scooping and stirring. But this messy thing with its slurpy and clumpy half-finished food bits needed something else. Something that could do all sorts of things at once. Something flexible and easy to hold. Something that was neither spoon nor fork, but a bit of both. That's when Spork landed. The messy thing saw Spork and immediately stopped and gurgled. It grabbed Spork and held him motionless in its fist. It tapped him once and let out a cheerful shriek. It wagged Spork excitedly up and down. 
And that's how Spork finally and happily found his way to the table. Just a bit round, just a bit pointy, just right. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this book. Until next time, let's read again. Bye!